Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to another exciting installment of the VIB News Attack. Coming to you from the beautiful townhouse, bar and lounge in exciting and beautiful downtown Vallejo. A joint production of OzCat Radio at 89.5 FM, the Vallejo Independent Bulletin at IBVallejo.com. Tonight, June 10th, 2014, the Vallejo City Council meeting. Tonight's topics... And oh, you're looking at me. Okay, Mr. Mark. And Car, my faithful sidekick. No, I'm the, I'm your sidekick, I think. <laughs> no, I think you're the sidekick. Uh, I'm the sidekick. Oh, no. Cut. I'm cut. everybody's sidekick. <laughs> Tonight's topics. The budget. Okay. Major big, topic. Big headline tonight. The budget again. Budget study session to prepare for the budget for 2014-2015. The it's a big budget. It's... One million dollars. <laughs> no, it's a little more than that, actually. It's a lot more than that, yeah. Well, it but, was the budget. And then and um, other topics that came up, a proposal for a new way to do reserve funds, and we'll get back to that. It's pretty fancy, kind of interesting. Participatory budgeting. Participatory budgeting. That's that was probably you, the people, decide how to spend your money. Right. That's the concept behind it, and uh, city has not quite fully embraced that, in my opinion. Um, they like to spend the money. Uh, then uh, there's a celebration of Juneteenth with a party on the 21st at City Park. And a couple things that came up briefly and were postponed. But we'll get to all the news as we get into the details. If it's postponed, it doesn't count. <laughs> Till later. Till later. So There was also a smoking ordinance that got kicked down the, kicked down the, kicked down the road. Right. So the two things to, to kind of dismiss the two things that will be taken up at some other point. One was a proposal from Malgapo and Du Costa to uh, ban smoking at transit stops in the city of Vallejo. A laudable concept, but it was shot down over the fact that it's going to take staff time, effort, thought, and all kinds of other stuff, and the priority was questioned. Right, right. So the, the idea, I think, that initially had propelled this forward was that uh, there were some organizations that thought they had prepackaged an ordinance that the city could just adopt. But it turns out that the staff time for bringing the ordinance forward could be as much as 130 hours. And then there would be implementation considerations of outreach to the public and how do you manage the whole thing. And so the net of all of the discussion was it's a nice idea to try to protect people from secondhand smoke, but we're going to have to postpone that to another time because we have higher priorities right now. All right, so onward to the uh, alternatively not so bad this year and getting worse in coming years story of the budget. Right. Uh, starting with a balanced budget this year, and we're looking at uh, a $1.5 million shortfall in the 2015 2016 budget. So you look at the pathway the Vallejo is on, and the big question starts to be. Uh, can we chart a path that is going to keep us from going back into bankruptcy? A lot of things against us right now. We've taken the Measure B sales tax money, which is that additional money on top of sales tax in Vallejo, which gives us the highest sales tax in Solano County. Um, and a lot of that has been spent on staff positions, which kind of flies in the face of a principle of budgeting, which is you don't spend one-time monies on recurring costs. So that in itself is problematic. Right. And that's probably a trend that I think people should really take a look at. Um, this year, for 2014-2015, the city is rightfully proud and happy that we will have what they call a structurally balanced budget. And so that means that the incoming revenues and the expected expenses will match. But that's one year out of on the five-year projection, we're already looking at deficits starting again next year based on expected revenues. And a big part of that is, you know, are we planning to spend more than we can reasonably plan to take in? With the Measure B monies, with the uh, former council majority, they had a very strict policy about only spending Measure B monies on one-time expenses. Um, not on ongoing expenses like staffing. Right now we have 52 staff positions that are funded out of Measure B, which of course will expire in eight years. And of those 52 positions, 38 of them are for police and fire. So it's a, a really big question as to, um, is it, does it make sense now to fund positions that we know the revenues that funding is funding those positions is going to go away? Right, and uh, you've got this uh, sales tax measure that is going to disappear unless the voters uh, vote to reinstate it. Right. And then you've got a situation uh, 
the flip side of it is there was a lot of talk about economic development and growth. Uh, city manager Dan Keene uh, described the growth, uh, our, the growth of our uh, um, economic base in Vallejo as anemic, um, where we're looking at a growth rate of around 3.5%. Right. Uh, you know, compared to the increase in expense, it's, it also was, uh, I think his quote was, doesn't quite cut it. Right. So what we're looking at is he showed a 20-year history that showed that annualized over the 20 years, we had about a 3.5% 3 growth you know, rate if you um, level out all the highs and the lows. So there were a couple spikes, one around the dot-com area in 99, and then another spike in the year 2005. But you know, when you level it all out between the spikes and the valleys, 3.5% growth, while our expenses are growing 5%. And so that, that's an equation that doesn't add up and that will, if we stay on this path, is going to lead us into trouble once again. This year in particular, um, Mayor Osby Davis pointed out that there's going to be pressure on trying to increase the salaries and benefits portion of the budget since we do have a, a balanced budget. But again, um, they're not taking into account, well, what happens to those expenses in, in years after this year when we already know we're going to have a deficit? And, oh, by the way, let's not forget that Vallejo is distinguished by having the fifth most expensive employee contracts in the entire state of California. Absolutely. Fifth. Yeah, so um, that's something that I think we really are going to have to change long term if we ever expect our services to be at the par where we need them to be as a city. And I can tell you, I mean, having uh, followed this stuff for years, it, it's, it's definitely kind of frustrating to be sitting in a council meeting and listening to sort of the same discussion, although, uh, you know, that we had going up to coming up to bankruptcy, although I will say, uh, you know, having been through the pain of bankruptcy in the city, there, there is more awareness, but it, it really doesn't change the facts on the ground, which is a structural deficit that our expenses are growing faster than our reasonable expectation of increase in revenue. I mean, there was, right. there's always sort of, um, I guess, a, an impulse to budget in expectation of future revenues. I mean, everyone, you know, wants to promote economic development. Oh, groovy, smashing, yay, capitalism. <laughs> but, <laughs> right, yeah, but just, if, you, if you read the fine print in the city report, they say themselves, the city staff says, that a lot of the potential development we have to look forward to is not going to take effect. We're not going to feel the impact f of that for a couple years. And that's best case scenario if the deals come to be done. So the city has about one, two, three, four, five, maybe, yeah, five major areas that they're looking for development in. One is in the waterfront, and this is news to me tonight. Um, apparently, there's some negotiations around the deal that the city had, the long term deal the city had with Callahan. Um, I can only hope that the negotiations are going to be working in the city's favor and maybe uh, bringing a greater variety of opportunity to what we do on the waterfront. On the waterfront, so that's something that's supposed to um, the negotiation is supposed to take place by the end of the year. And don't forget the badge and pass office, and that is a, a real eyesore in the city of Vallejo and something that is not helpful to economic development. Right. Uh, if you're not familiar with the name badge and pass, it's that big gray thing that's right on the corner of uh, Tennessee and Mare Island Way. Um, it, it is a haven for squatters. It's been on fire more than once, and there's a lot of wrangling about uh, money to to tear it down. And part of the thing tonight, there were a lot of advocates of participatory budgeting um, in council tonight because the funding has been essentially suspended for one year. Um, so they're going to kind of, they've kind of reduced the amount of money going into particip participatory budgeting and they've kind of stretched it out. And the flip side of it is there's a push largely on the part of the mayor to get some of the derelict buildings on Mare Island and also that badge and pass office torn down. So you can certainly see argument on, on both sides of it. Uh, a lot of people spoke about the positive aspects of participatory budgeting, um, what it's done for the community. Um, you know, one of the speakers, it was the flip side, uh, Berkey Worrell, who uh, <laughs> spoke, as he often does, uh, about Measure B and how it was described as money that was intended to go to a great extent for, for public safety, or at least that was in the description. Um, you know, of course, 
the thing about measure base is the general tax. Right, yeah. So Berkey always carries the flag for trying to rewrite the history on what Measure B was about and claims that Measure B was supposed to be for public safety and if, you know, by implication, if you spend it on anything else, then you're not doing the right thing. In fact, of course, Measure B was passed as a general tax. And as I understand it, citizens were polled prior to the thing going on the ballot and asked if they had a tax that was only going for police, would they approve it? And they said no. So that's why the city passed a general tax to begin with. Right. So and, now, and, but just to play yeah. devil's advocate, I mean, the folks that are sort of on the other side of that argument, I mean, the language in the ballot description did say that. And, and let's face it, a lot of voters, they don't, they don't know, you know, general tax from special tax. I mean, the general tax, obviously, it, it's, not, it's not locked in as far as what you can spend it on, whereas a special tax, it has a specific purpose, it can only be spent for that. So right. the description was there, why? Obviously, because it's, it was good for marketing. Right. And, but it is a general tax. So, you know, there's, there's six of one, a half dozen of another. Uh, you know, it, playing the devil's advocate to my devil's advocate, <laughs> um, some of the points... Oh, you devil. I, <laughs> Some people say, but um, playing devil's advocate to my devil's advocate, uh, you know, a lot of people brought up the point that, um, in terms of, you know, Berkey is always saying police, and he's a retired police officer. He was the head of the police officers' association in his day. Uh, he's always talking about the need for more police, and yes, we need to have enough police. Um, however, the improvement in a lot of the neighborhoods through the projects and participatory budgeting. Uh, have an impact on, on crime. Right, right. Because so we have more of a community building approach with participatory budgeting versus uh, sort of a, a punitive and correctional approach via policing. Obviously we do need adequate policing for our community, but again going back to employee contracts, if you compare the cost of our police staff to those in uh, Vacaville and Fairfield, we pay roughly 40% more for our salaries and benefits compared to those other cities right here in the county. So if our contracts were more in line with the market norm, then we would be able to have both police and community projects. And, and maybe then some of these debates about uh, how to spend the money and how to get economic development off the ground uh, wouldn't become so long and involved. Yeah, and I, I think the bottom line is a lot of people um, who are on one side of the issue or the other, they want to find that silver bullet and pick it. You've got people who are going to say, if we have more police, it's going to fix the city. Uh, other people who are going to say, if we have more economic development, it's going to fix the city. Then you have other groups that say, if there's more community involvement, it's going to fix the city. Whereas, it, it's really all of the above. Right, right. I think you have to have the, the warp and the woof of the fabric of the community coming together with infrastructure and safety and community involvement. And I just hope that the city doesn't lose the momentum they've had with participatory budgeting and also, frankly, the, the national and even international recognition we've gotten for it. So it's worked for us on a number of different ways. It's pretty high yield investment in terms of uh, dollars spent and impact gotten. So, um, you know, I think Vallejo has a tendency in the past to really look at what I'd call the Santa Claus kind of school of development of we're looking for some giant miracle to just come and poof, take care of our problems. And I think that that mindset in, in general is a problem for us, that we need to look at more granular things. It's going to be smaller things. And over time, that's going to lead to healthier community. So I want to, while you're looking at your notes, I wanted to just finish on the economic development and the things that are on the horizon for the city. We have five things. One is the waterfront deal and redoing the, the, the deal with Callahan. Another is the Cook property, which that's that big parcel over on the other side of Highway 80 between roughly the Safeway properties and the Target properties. Um, and there's going to be a study session next week on that, so that'll be interesting to see what the city has to say. North Mare Island is another big area uh, for potential development. That's um, what's prompting the idea of demol demolishing the buildings. And unfortunately, in the latest iteration of the budget, the city did not specifically include what the demo demolition cost would be for the badge and pass uh, an oversight? Did they forget about it? What, what was going on there? Um, that's something to watch for and to really hold their feet to the fire. 
Um, then there's um, the so-called green concrete plant down at the old Sperry Flower location, and then finally downtown properties, including specifically um, some of the properties that have, will become available since the redevelopment agency was dissolved and transferred its properties to the city. Don't so those, forget the lights. Oh yeah. So now this is an interesting thing. There's some people who will say that the city can uh, find money whenever it wants to, and this might be one of those kind of projects. Um, there was a proposal that just landed in the budget this week for using $1.7 million to put to um, convert all of the street lights in the city to LED lights. And apparently, if we do that, we could save almost $400,000 a year in electricity and take advantage of a rebate that through PG&E of $650,000. That would be a one-time rebate, and only if we do it this year. So um, we didn't have the money, money for PB, but all of a sudden um, they're proposing to use $1.7 million for LEDs. So um, maybe that's a good thing to do or, or not. I don't know. Um, but it was kind of a surprise. Well, there you have it. And budget stuff, it's confusing. It's complicated. It's hard to encapsulate in our little podcast. But I think uh, we've kind of touched on some of the points. Right. Uh, you know, the, the, the good news is this year the budget is balanced, but we've got, we've got structural deficits ahead. And if we don't watch it, boop. We're going to fall right back in the hole. Right. So one thing that came that was proposed tonight, and it was a study session, so it's just a new idea, and it's a different way of doing the reserves for the city. Um, basically, it would go from one general re reserve fund to having uh, up to, I think, six different buckets for different types of reserves, infrastructure, e extreme events like big earthquakes, uh, contingencies, when we have uh, liability, when we have, I don't know, different buckets. And essentially, um, the idea would be to uh, put more money away for those rainy days. And that if we had done that, we might have been able to avoid bankruptcy to begin with. Um, and then well, I think the bottom line is that uh, in spite of the impending structural deficits, it's important to have reserves because you have one hiccup, one uh, major situation that goes wrong, and that's it. Right. You hit the wall. Right. And Dan Keen, the city manager, had p pointed out that other cities um, were able to weather the economic downturn because of their reserves. Vallejo was not. So Vallejo, um, prior to bankruptcy, had taken its reserve down to 1% of the budget. 15% uh, is seen as what you're supposed to, your you know, desired goal. Right now we're at 9%. So we're making, we're crawling our way back up to where you should have things uh, to be financially healthy. Vallejo, a city slowly crawling its way, hammering out <laughs> financial balance that can sustain us, hopefully. Right. And, uh, on that note, Anne, we're running over time, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit the button and say goodnight. Okay. Shut your cake off.